meeting to order. Dr. Fiola, can you call roll? Ms. Benecki. Dr. Brown. Mr. Essenflair. Here. Ms. Hogue. Here. Ms. Hollingworth. Here. Mr. Knuckles. Here. Ms. Paoli. Here. Vice President Hogarth. Here. President Crooked. Here. They stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dr. Priola, could you please read the statement concerning open public meetings? Public notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act has been given by the superintendent of schools in the following manner. On January 10th, 2023, notice of this meeting was posted on the interior of the school administration offices, 95 Grove Street, Haddonfield. Written notice was submitted and filed with the Haddonfield Borough Clerk and notices were emailed to the Courier Post and in retrospect newspapers. Thank you. Okay, thank you everyone for coming today. Um, we have Cami here as our student representative. And um, okay, we're gonna we're working on a skeleton staff here tonight. So if pardon mm -hmm. any uh, any flips in our performance. Um, okay, we first we're gonna start with student commendations. We have uh, Henry Cohen for National Security Language Initiative for Youth Scholarship. Can I say something? I would love for you to. So Mrs. You. McCow will do the introduction. I'm going to interject myself yes. to student recognition because I get so excited for student recognition because um, I think we have such incredible students. Um, and Henry is definitely one of them. I have to brag and maybe you all get to live with him, but I'm um, working with him last year as a student officer and just I couldn't be prouder and uh, more excited to work with students like Henry, but especially Henry. He literally take so much passion and um, care in our community and fostering a, a positive, loving environment here. And so when I heard about him going to Russia for the summer, I was like, no, he can't be he's so young. Um, and then the reality can be like, you're way more mature than, than your years and you're gonna do wonderful things. But I kind of want to put you on the spot because I know you were in the sun, you're famous. Um, even though, and it is, but could you just describe real quickly for everyone your, your experience? Would you like to come up here? Yeah, and that way on. we can see you. If you can see yourself in that little box there, then you can have this on YouTube for forever. Um, so the National Security Language Initiative for Youth is a program from the U.S. State Department where they sponsor uh, teams from high schools to go study critical languages abroad during the summer in academic year programs. So you live with a host family who only speaks that language, wow. as well as attending university classes to continue for about four hours to six hours a day, alongside homework and intensive language instruction throughout your whole time period. So I was fortunate enough to go to Bishkek, Kyrgyzstan this summer for seven weeks. So you basically have a college degree now. <laughs> 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 You're from Russia. Yes, from Russia. Well, congratulations for being congratulations. one of those. Congratulations. 
Okay, um, we'll move on to the student representative report. Um, so we started school this month on the 5th. Um, so it's kind of slow picking up the pace. Uh, we had back to school, which went really smoothly. We're introducing the freshmen into the building. Freshman orientation, which is led by the peer leaders, which is a class period that they take every day, um, every week on Mondays in order to, you know, acclimate themselves to the building and get used to everything. Uh, we had a water ice Wednesday, Wednesdays, uh, which was hosted by our overall student council, which was like the big student council for everyone. And that was a really big success. We're trying to get people to be more involved with student council. We had a lot of people show up to take delegate forms from the club fair. Uh, so they can be involved in student government and be a voice for their peers. Um, we had back to school night, which was really well attended. We had a lot of parents come out to see teachers and get to know the staff in the building uh, for this coming school year. We have the club fair, like I just mentioned, a whole lot of clubs. We have identity-based clubs. We have fishing club. We have women in engineering club. We have the ski club. We have all these sort of, you know, volunteer clubs. We have Stanford Camden, the Leo club, all this kind of stuff. Um, which is available to our students. Uh, the Week of Respect is next week. So the Anti-Bias Club is working with the school to um, get the message out. And we're doing a lot of um, sampling from the peers to understand how we can better make uh, the HMHS a safe place. We're doing Wear Blue to represent like anti-bullying, I believe. Uh, we have the PSATs coming up, up October 11th. Um, and then also with that comes senior seminar. So we have our seniors uh, taking fun electives with teachers. We had the freshman barbecue was this Friday, but it got moved to October 13th because of the rain, unfortunately. But that's just another event that uh, the peer leaders and the school hosts to make sure the freshmen feel included. And then we also have on that same night, the homecoming game and the pink out. Um, and we're having great attendance for football and all these uh, fall sports are starting. Great. Um, how's it feel to be starting your senior year? stressful <laughs> um it's a lot i mean with and i mean like i feel like now that i've done this for so long it's like getting back into that rhythm and like i feel so used to it all now but it's like i'm finally the one in charge like i've always been vice president or just members of clubs or i've always just been i haven't been a varsity rower before i haven't been in so many ap classes before i haven't been looked to to be a leader as much i mean i have some positions like this where i get opportunity to be in those positions but it's you know it's really gratifying to be here finally and to like feel like I can do it all on my own and um to like believe in myself and then also looking forward to college um which is really stressful but a lot of my teachers have been great with recommendations advice being not like acknowledging the fact that this fall like seniors are talking a lot about college and not so much school so they're being very generous with us so I think I've had a great start. That's great. Yeah, I'm really happy to hear that. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, Cami, what was the date of the pink out game again? Um, October 13th. Okay, thank you. Um, next, we are going on to presentations. We are fortunate to have a presentation today on curriculum revisions um, and an overview. And this is by two of our um, new supervisor, Katie Russo's, not new to the district, but new to this new position, Katie Russo's and Matt DiDonato. So we look forward to your presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for having us. So we started a project this summer to revise our curriculum maps. And we're gonna show with you first the scope of the work that we did this summer. So the first thing we did was we created a new template for our curriculum maps. And the reason we did that was because currently our curriculum maps are housed in OnCourse and it's um, a template that is controlled by OnCourse, designed by OnCourse and really has no flexibility and as we move away from using OnCourse in general, we're going to be losing all of the information in there. Um, so our goal was to create maps that would be comprehensive, controlled by Haddonfield, and owned by Haddonfield. So we created maps that are in a, a shared Google Drive that will then be accessible to all teachers. And um, the individual documents will then be able to be shared on the website directly from those documents. We work to um, 
incorporate everything that the New, Jer New Jersey Department of Education requires in the curriculum map. So that was a, a big priority as we designed those maps was to make sure that they, you know, met obviously met the requirements for QSAC, but also were user friendly for teachers. So that when a teacher comes to the district or teaches a new course, they can look at a curriculum map and actually know what it is that they're going to be teaching. And if a parent looks at a curriculum map, they know exactly what their child is going to be learning in that course. So after we created that template, um, it came time to actually do the work of putting things into those maps. Um, this summer we focused on ELA and math, K through 12, um, and we tried to get as much done of that as we could. I want to give a major shout out to all of the teachers who helped us with that project. The teachers know the classes that they teach the best, and so they did an amazing job of helping us transfer that material over from on course into our new template. Um, it started out as just that, transferring things from on course to the new template. Um, but the teachers really went above and beyond, and together we were able to, you know, do three things. In some cases, we were adding new uh, material to the maps that weren't in the previous maps, and we'll talk a little bit about that later with the side-by-side -side comparison of how these maps are slightly different. Um, we deleted some things that were in our maps that either we're not currently doing or that weren't really required to be in our maps. Um, and then we also made revisions to make sure our maps were up to date and reflected um, what's actually happening in the classrooms. And then um, as part of that, we created a curriculum and map checklist that we could use um, to track the progress of how these maps were going. Um, and Katie's going to explain a little bit about that. So I know it's very hard to see, I apologize, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about what this checklist incorporates. So it's a collaborative checklist. Um, on the left is every component of the map, every aspect. And on the right, there are two columns, um, and they are a place for the teachers and the supervisors to collaborate in that teachers could review the work that they did and let us know, is this part of the map complete? Is it still being worked on? Um, are there things that need to be added later? And then there's a supervisor column so that we could go in, we went in and reviewed every single map, every single aspect of what teachers had done. And we then added some notes on the right to show the work that needs to be continued um, throughout the school year. So it was really to review, to ensure, and to indicate which elements are complete so that when we take a look at them, during either November PD or later on during the year, we know exactly what components need to be revised or, or completed. And I sort of point out that you see there, there's some, we have a system of green, yellow, and red, and you see some yellow and red ones there, and we chose to show you that to show you that this work isn't finished, and we're going to talk to you about um, what this means for next steps. Um, but I, I also want to point out that this, by the time these are fully finished, all of those things will be green. And when this is on, when each map is on the school website, this first page will not be here. So we plan to upload everything as PDFs. That will not change as PDFs don't change. Um, but then we're going to keep the Google Drive documents that we can constantly be updating and working with. And then when we're ready, let's say, you know, a year into this after the first draft was approved, a teacher slightly changes the way that the curriculum works, the order of something, how something is taught. They can be making those changes all year long, and then we can send it back to you for approval. So that's the advantage of kind of having this Google Doc to work with, and then we publish the final documents online. Um, I also want to point out that this there's 15 things in this checklist. Five of them were new to these maps. So it really wasn't, I just want to emphasize that this wasn't just like a clerical task of transferring the maps from one program to another, that the teachers were really were doing new things here. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about those now. Um, this is, I know it's very small, uh, it's showing a side-by-side -side of what the learning outcomes look like in our old maps from OnCourse and our new maps from the current template. On the left, you can see that the learning outcomes consisted of enduring understandings and essential questions. So those enduring understandings were big picture things um, that students should understand about the, the specific discipline that they were learning. Um, but it's... What a student understands could be a little bit of a nebulous thing, so we chose to have our learning outcomes framed in terms of objectives, um, which actually did not appear in our maps before, and these objectives were split into two components, um, what students should know and what students should be able to do. 
Um, and this is more of a concrete thing that we can use, that teachers can use in class to know where their students should be, that parents can use to know what their students should be able to do um, by the end of individual units. Yeah. You're, it says side-by-side -side comparison. Is it? Oh, yes. I don't totally understand that. So this was the old maps. Ah, OK. Yeah, I got sorry, it. I should have explained Thank that. You. So this is what the old maps look like here. Um, and it's just the learning outcomes section. And this is our new OK. Map. Thank you. You're welcome. Another side-by-side -side comparison on the left is our old map, and this is showing the legislative mandates, which there are several legislative mandates from the state, um, mandates such as the Holocaust, um, the Amistad, uh, so Asian American heritage. So we, in the past, under those mandates, did one of two things, or we found one of two things in our old curriculum maps. Either a list of books that featured diverse characters that were just repeated every unit in every grade level without really differentiating are these actually books we read or not, um, or a standard, a social studies standard, without any explanation of how that material is, is being taught in the classroom. So what we asked teachers to do, and, and the one I'm sharing on the right here, um, was created by Bill Osher, and I'm only saying that because he just did such a phenomenal job of telling the teacher and the parent reading this curriculum map exactly how the novel that's being used fits into the mandate. So for example, for Amistad Commission, um, it says, set in South Africa during the apartheid, the play Master Harold and the boys provide powerful lessons about racism, addressing that part of the mandate mandate as cited below. So it specifies exactly what materials are being used and how they relate to the legislative mandate, which is helpful for everybody viewing these maps. This is amazing. Thank you. Seriously. Yeah, it really is. And I, I love the, 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 the connections that you're, yeah. you're making, the elaboration. It is, yeah. This is more than just checking the box. It, it's obvious that you guys dove deep into this. Thank That's right. you. A much more kind of thoughtful approach in terms of how to integrate required important content into the curriculum in a meaningful way and the fact that you folks have collaborated so closely with our teachers to do this is very sensible and make, and it explains why you have such a strong process so thank you thank you yes there are a lot of next steps though <laughs> <laughs> so um here's where we're heading next um so this was phase one and phase one happened in the summertime and it's going to continue into the school year um, we did want to let you know that, or you might be aware that in October, it was planned that we would have new standards for NG, or for ELA and math. Um, it's looking that like those standards might be delayed based on some articles we've been seeing. Um, so uh, we're going to submit in October the, the, the things we have so far that are ready to go, knowing that they are not completely finished in their current, um, the, the way they are currently. Um, but knowing that in November, especially, a lot of the work is going to be done um, to big, fill in the gaps that we missed over the summer, especially some of the, the newest sections. For example, um, in our new learning outcomes section, we include big ideas for every unit. Um, and that's something that can really help focus understanding and, and, and get to the heart of why we do a certain unit. Um, so that was something that's absent from some of the documents. I don't think it's going to affect and, you know, them not being finished right now isn't going to have a huge impact, but they will be complete when they're all finished. Um, and so in November, December, we're going to have grade level teachers work together on that instead of the one teacher, one or two teachers who worked on those maps over the summer for that particular course. Um, we're going to have teach all teachers who teach that course work together to kind of come up with that. Um, and then uh, you will continue to have full access to the maps that we've created. And we hope to have some draft maps ready to go for you by the end of this year. Um, and as we place these new maps on the district website, which I will, which, as I said before, PDFs that cannot be changed, um, we're going to make sure that our the head of our um, departments and grade levels on our members of our LPDC teams are working with their teams um, to make sure that the maps are being faithfully implemented in classrooms. 
phase two will continue into next summer and next school year. And that next part of the project, although we have some excellent groundwork that is going to help support and propel the project forward, is huge. Um, we need to, we will eventually need to revise the maps to incorporate the new lang uh, language arts and math standards whenever the state releases them. Um, our Department of Education representative of Camden County wasn't sure yet, even when that was going to happen. So usually once they're released, the state gives you at least a full year to implement them. So we will have time to update the maps. And there will need to be a lot of updating uh, at the lower elementary grades, especially for reading. Um, so that's the beginning part of phase two. Then we need to conti continue translating the maps for all of the courses that we didn't have teachers work on this past summer because we really didn't have enough people to translate all of the maps. Uh, we have a ton of, of um, electives and AP courses. Um, and when we think about language arts at the elementary level, that's not just reading, it's writing, it's word study, and we need a map for each of those areas. So there's a lot to do there. And then, of course, there are all the other subjects that are equally as important, social studies and science and foreign language and PE and the fine arts. So all of those things will need to continue developing maps. And, and we're going to need to work with our teachers, collaborating with, with them as experts of their courses. And also, I think it will help everyone to become more familiar with those standards as they're released or even the current standards uh, as, they're, as they're creating those maps. So that's it for our presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. And so I, I, I just want to add, uh, Matt and Katie, when, when Matt and Katie started, uh, July 1st was their first official day. Shortly thereafter, <laughs> Chuck and I uh, met with our, our supervisors. And the question was, where do we begin? And, and, and what's the priority? And you know you have exceptional people doing work when you're able to set a, a a set a priority and then the work that gets done far exceeds what you anticipated uh, and this is the case the only negative is you've you you've come out of the gate <laughs> with an incredible project now, to sustain at that level would almost be unrealistic uh, at, at the same time this has been such thoughtful and meaningful work because at the end of the day, we want to ensure that the curriculum that we uh, that is forward facing in public is reflective of what's happening in our classrooms. It's easily understood. It's not a document that just sits to check off a box of compliance that helps to ensure that what we're doing, we're doing with high quality. Um, and, and I believe we are well on our way to doing that and improving the great work that we're already doing. Uh, so thank you to you both and the work that you've done with our teachers over the summer and that we're continuing to do during the school year. You guys are great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's one minute in case some people have questions sure. and then we also want to praise you. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned the teachers that you work with. Yes. So um, with with these new positions, which we're all very excited about, and, and, and I agree, out of the gate, this is just this is wonderful to see. Um, but part of it was uh, to not only establish the, the framework, but then ultimately to to have have teachers feel inspired and and have them you know really excited about what they're doing because then that trickles down and and that gets you know the the, the, the students feel it as well. So can you talk a little bit about any of that that you you might have? I know it's very very early on, but that that's the the whole the the, the full vision of what these new positions are, are going to bring to our district. I know one thing that came of this um, was teachers worked on maps for cloud courses that they didn't necessarily even teach and so they reached out to their colleagues their colleagues gave them feedback they discussed books and teaching points that they were using in their classrooms one grade level to the next in the high school especially um, but even in the elementary level i saw a lot of collaboration amongst the teachers and i think that the one thing that's really great about looking at this is for some of us this is our chance to look at the standards and really and make decisions about why do we teach what we teach and when are we teaching what we teach and what's the order in which we're doing it and why do we do that and i think a lot of that planning and a lot of that critical thinking about the best ways to teach and learn something is a, is a lot of the reasons why teachers become teachers so i think getting down to that work was really illuminating for a lot of people including us i know i the last time I, 
you know, elementary school is new for me. That's one of the fun new things about this position for me. And I, I, it was great for me to, to, to do this project because now I feel like I have a better handle on what I'm going to see as I've been getting into elementary school classrooms. Um, which, by the way, is amazing. Elementary school teachers are totally awesome. <laughs> I, I think everybody should spend a day with an elementary school teacher, you know. Um, so that's been really great. And I think, you know, as you point out that, like, our positions are curriculum, but they are much more than that. And we both, and I think I can speak for Katie, too, and, and Rob as well, in saying that probably our favorite part of the day is the parts of the days that we're in classrooms working with teachers, working alongside them, and, and helping to support them and, and you know, giving them the positive feedback that they give their students, you know, and, and, and focusing on practice and what we can do to, to create great outcomes for our students. Yeah, and I love, um, there's so many benefits to having you have a bird's eye view on what's going on because, you know, we get so insulated when we're in our own classroom. We don't always know what's going on the year before or the year after, just logistically you can't. And being able to, to make sure each courses align each grade level, that's an impact that directly helps the students. And I think that it's it's that's what I love about what you're doing is because it it directly is going to impact our students and through the long run, throughout all of their years. And um, working with pre-service teachers, the day that you show them the NJSLS standards, they're like eyes are wide, no one, it makes no sense. To them it's really a challenge i mean as you know but those and as any parents know who go to look up the standards they can it can be a rabbit's hole trying to figure out what am i supposed to do so i love that you're really helping to break that down and elaborate and guide the teachers on what is what what is it that that's really meaningful in this standard i think that's great because um yeah i just think it's great i think it will help with continuity and um, really teacher creativity. I think that's something too that's that's misunderstood that when we have a really clear curriculum, people often think that then you don't get to be creative, but it actually frees you up to be creative because you're like, all right, this is what I have to do. Now let me, you know, let me teach that in my own way um, rather than getting bogged down with, well, what am I supposed to do? So I really think that it will increase like teacher creativity and and really, you know, the student engagement. So I'm really happy to see this. Yeah, yeah it's not a script; it's a framework. It, exactly, that's exactly yeah, yeah. it, and and that that is really comforting, I think, for teachers too, because they can put their energies in where the students are going to be impacted. I will say, as an aside, I had my first meeting today with the um, language arts audit committee, which is on the agenda for approval today too. Um, and they're very excited to get to this work to make sure that the articulation is there. They want to look at the maps we've worked on already. They want to help with the maps that still need to be translated. Um, so, so that definitely was inspiring and exciting for them. Um, and personally, like Matt was talking about the classroom visits, I spent uh, an entire block period in an AP seminar course that was phenomenal. And the parallels between what I had previously taught in fifth grade reading and writing and what I was seeing in this 12th grade course were phenomenal. I was just to be able to see that the foundation was being built in elementary school and then how it, how it, the outcomes, you know, senior year of high school is, is great. And I think we're going to be able to support that articulation. Yeah, I think that's great. And the common, la oh, I could go on all day. <laughs> but the common language that the teachers will use and the students will recognize. I, yeah, I think this is great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, moving on to committee reports. We did a lot of them last week. So, um, Mike, um, or Greg, Mike did yours last week. Um, Lynn, we did policy last week. Yeah, just a quick um, note on policy. We had uh, the school threat assessment policy was on the agenda for a second reading. We have pulled that. It's uh, policy 2419 because Strauss Esme just published a revised version and created a new mandated regulation. So we'll look at that in committee <coughs> next week and bring it back next month. Um, Linda, do you want to do some LRFP yep. updates? 
Uh, we met on Tuesday, and we had uh, members of the Honeywell uh, organization come and talk to us about ESIP grants. So ESIP is, I always knew the acronym, but it stands for Energy Savings Improvement Program. Um, and basically, uh, government entities in New Jersey can pay for improvements to, to the school with the savings that are projected. Uh, the energy savings that are projected. And uh, our schools did this uh, a couple of years ago with the LED lighting. So um, we went in and we were able to project if we changed out the lighting to LED over the course of X number of years, we'd be able to, to um, get a, a certain amount of energy savings. And using that, we were then able to get a grant to then put those lights in place. So we're now looking at that from a, a larger scope and Honeywell is one of the organizations that come in and they, they help you to, um, to really find all of the potential savings um, and we all look at them and, and some other companies to, to do that, but we're very interested in moving forward with it. And just to um, identify, there were a couple of things when we were looking at the um, the scope of what could be the, the bond referendum. And we pulled out some pretty big things saying, you know what, these can be handled with ESIP grants. Um, and I asked Mike to, to get me the, the list of, oh, I just lost it, um, what the, the bigger ones were. So the all of, all of the um, HVAC for the all purpose routes, we're looking to replace them. And that's a, a little over a million dollars that can be handled with the, the ESIP grant. Uh, conversion of the pneumatic HVAC control systems to digital controls throughout the district. That's uh, 1.4 and uh, replacing the uh, C-Wing here at the high school, the unit vents, um, $1.7 million. So by, um, by projecting out what the energy savings would be by putting this new equipment in place, we can get grants to um, do to subsidize that. So like, how does that work, practically speaking? Are the grants like straight up, we're going to save a million dollars over 20 years, and so they give us a grant for a million dollars? Or is it more of an interest-free loan? What are the mechanics of how that's? You would have to ask Mike. OK. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is, it, it's definitely not, you know, you, you're gifted the money. So there, there's, so there's no repayment. No, no, no. It is. It's based on on your savings. savings. Yeah, so based yeah. On, if they project a million dollars of energy savings over fifteen years or twenty years, that's the grant. And that's awesome. Yeah, we're not reliable for to produce those savings. It's just they go through a process to get it approved, oh. and it's believable. That was my question. So I'm glad you brought that up. We're not held accountable yeah. to produce it. So if somebody gives a bad forecast, which wouldn't even be anybody in our district. Yeah. And there, I think there's the certified. Thing. I think we need to talk to Mike about that because that's not my understanding. <laughs> it's a terrible time for him not to be here. Because the thing is, there, um, because I asked about that, because if you project that you're going to save $5 million in, in 15 years' time and then you get that, that grant, I believe that what it is is that we pay for <coughs> that, but we're, we're subsidized with it up front. But People like Honeywell, they actually have the guarantee yes, because if if you don't yeah, that, see those savings, then then it could hurt your budget. Because right. if you thought right. that you were going to save, you know, five million dollars, but you only save four, well, now we're out a million dollars. So they actually have a guarantee that they put in place now. So they're very comfortable and, and they are conservative with their estimates to make sure that you're going to be covered, but then you can also get this guarantee just to, to make sure that in the long run, we're, we're not hurting the district. So looking at all of those things, this is, you know, this is just- That's the, a win-win to be able to yeah. pull it out. And yeah. Have it, yeah, have it. yeah, so there there is, this is just preliminary. They came, they talked yeah. to us about it, um, but just wanted to kind of bring everybody in the loop that- Are you required to use Honeywell no. products? No. That's awesome. Oh, oh, <laughs> I, th oh. I, th Maybe. I think so. Yeah. I, thought you other you, would do right. it yeah. Yeah. Which... I thought you were saying, are you required to use Honeywell? No, there's other companies that do Honeywell it. Honeywell was the first one that we yeah. talked about. Okay. Yeah. But this is, so it we would have flexibility or the committee would have flexibility to evaluate different providers and yeah. choose the provider. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Honeywell is one of the largest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there are one or two others uh, that we consider to provide the pro uh, proposals. 
And we have it in the house for us time. Yeah. <laughs> Just curious as to, because obviously there's some incentive for them too. Yeah, I think that's why. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, you know, we can help you realize these savings. And as a result, we, right. you're, you're, you're going to buy our product. product. And so, yep. Yeah. One of the things we asked was the windows. Can we all, you know, but that, there's yeah. not enough, you can't prove that savings. Yeah. So they don't <laughs> even go there. Yeah. Windows, you don't think we need new windows? Yeah, yeah. we could. Yeah, but you can't yeah. prove that we're going to get energy savings from yeah. <laughs> that's a shame. So that's it for LRFA. Um, and Meg, you got you went you did your thing yep. last week. Um, PTA, any updates? Okay. Um, regulations for board review. Um, we have two, three, one, two, which is class size, and nine, one, nine, one, which are booster clubs. Um, and that's a new regulation. Um. And again, we just, we don't vote on those, but they are for our information. So Dr. Creole, do you have a report, anything today? No report. Okay, and Mr. Klaus is at a conference, so he is not here. Um, I don't have much for my board president's report. I just wanted to, um, the, you know, we made it through September. So, uh, you know, we're moving along. I think it's been a, um, it's been a good school year. I'm glad you've had a good experience so far. I think we're off to a good start. Um, if we know we're having the um, school board election and Mike is running um, again. And I didn't know if anyone was in the audience who's running. Okay, so we do have, um, we have four um, members, uh, four people running and um, we, um, yeah, we'll look forward to it. Hope I'm here in January. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and we welcome anybody else running to come to the to, to the meetings. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Or what the current issues are. And um, okay, so moving on to public comment. We'll now begin the open public comment session. Members of the community are invited to speak up to three minutes. If you'd like to make additional comments, you must wait until each person has made a chance had a chance to make their initial statement. All comments must be directed towards the board, not members of the public. According to our bylaws, comment session can last no longer than one hour. This is an opportunity for the board to listen, but not debate issues or enter question and answer period. Please be aware that not all issues brought up before a board meeting will be resolved that evening. We ask you to identify yourself by stating your name and the name of your street. While public education can be an emotional issue, we strive to maintain a certain level of decorum at meetings. Public meetings are recorded and streamed, and students often participate in the meetings. As such, citizens are expected to maintain a tone of courtesy and civility. You would like to make a statement? Okay. Um, Seeing no statements, we'll move on to items for at, um, for approval. Uh, governance, acceptance of the monthly HIV vandalism violence report, approval of the job description for the teacher on special assignment in charge of student life and discipline, policy approval, um, policy 1110, I'm sorry, 2132-2312, and 9191, and approval of the revised 2324 elementary academic calendar that's adjusted for the parent teacher conferences. Motion? Motion. Meg? Second. Heather? Discussion? Just a reminder for those um, tuning in the teacher on special assignment is for the dean of students position that's been vacated. And um, so this is a temporary position to be filled out. Can I ask a question about the regulation? I know we don't approve them, but. Uh -huh. um, uh, Lynn will probably have, have a, or actually Gino too, Gino's person. The booster clubs mm -hmm. regulation, I just had noticed as I was looking at it, the um, no door-to-door -door solicitation, is that a change from past policy? It's, we never, or I know we didn't have a formal we policy, but yeah. is that a change from past informal policy? It's never been made explicit. Okay. So, and there's also another policy that talks about fundraising that we'll have to adjust uh, also. 
That's it. Um, it's under that section. Oh, so you're saying it, there's another policy that it ties to as well. Correct. But it and doesn't spell it like our current policies don't spell it out. Like correct. And that's why we want to make it clear in the regulation. Okay. And, and, and to be so clear, I won't it's see not. the baseball team or the football team. Well, it, 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 it's <laughs> not that, okay, my, uh, my, my varsity baseball uh -huh. player can't go knock on my neighbor's mm -hmm. door. Right. Uh, it's see. the idea of cold going door to door. Right. Um, that's not something we, we do not support. Okay, great. Yeah, so you can still text your friends or your Thanks. friends or I just thought my kids always hit up their friends. Still in your parents. <laughs> okay, any other comments? Dr. Priel, can you um, take them? Ms. Hogue. Yes. Ms. Hollingworth. Yes. Mr. Nip Knuckles. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Ms. Paoli. Yes. Vice President Hogar. Yes. Ms. Benecki. Yes. Mr. Essenplayer. Yes. Yeah. President Crooked. Yes. A curriculum in special education, approval of field trips, conferences, travel, and overnight field trips. Resolution between the Board of Ed and Justin's um, to provide 23-24 yearbooks to HMHS. Resolution for the Board of Ed and Comegno Education for Professional Development. Resolution for the Implementation of Third Grade Foundations Program. Resolution of the Board of Ed and Learn Well Services to provide home bed instruction. Resolution for overnight athletic field trips for the 23-24 school year. Resolution between the Board of Ed and Dr. Brooke Hoffman for consulting services. Resolution to approve neuro abilities for professional neurologist evaluations. Resolution between the Board of Ed and TCMJ's Career and Community Studies Program. Resolution between the Board of Ed and the Yale School for um, um, out-of-district placement. Resolution between the Board of Ed and Gloucester County Special Services School District to provide um, a teacher of the deaf consultant services and educational services. Resolution between the Board of Ed and um, Gloucester County Special Services to provide a teacher of the deaf consultant. Resolution between the Board of Ed and Gloucester County Special Services School District for a teacher of the deaf consultant for um, a Christ the King student. Resolution to approve the virtual and remote instruction plan for 23-24 school year, which is required by code. A motion? Motion. Is that so? Me. Yeah. Sorry. Like, I thought like it was Cammy at first. I'm like, what's that? It's Stephen's Linda. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, discussion? Um, I was really excited at Back to School Night to hear that they were going to the State House again for third grade trips. I remember doing that as a kid, and I'm pleased that it is still happening in our New Jersey <laughs> public schools. Do you know about um, M for, I feel like I ask this type of question all the time, between, for the Christ the King student, yep. what's the mechanism that we're, it's federal funds that are paying for it, so we're in the through? That's correct. Uh, right. Every year we get a grant through uh, the federal government. It's our IDEA, Individuals with Disabilities Education mm -hmm. Act. Some of that grant funding goes to in-district services, but by law, uh, a certain percentage has to be made available to non-publics. Uh, so essentially what happens is every year, um, the director of special education, Dr. Blair, will be doing this in the spring, meets with the head of schools uh, from both uh, Haddonfield Friends and Christ the King to understand their special needs, their students with special needs. Students in private schools don't have an IEP, they have what's called a service plan mm -hmm. that's monitored by uh, county services. And uh, we in part use that federal funding to help support those programs. Great. I'm gonna say since Justin's yearbook is on here that whoever thought to put on the homepage of Genesis that you purchased or did not purchase oh your yearbook is genius. <laughs> because every, if you go to their homepage, yeah, you can see if you purchased it, because every year I check again, you again. did I buy it, did I not buy it, did I not? And then I've forgotten, and I, did, I thought I bought it. So I thought that was when I saw that this year, I was like, I agree. that was a great <laughs> 
I also want to clarify for the board item uh, G, uh, that consultation is for English language learning services. Uh, so we have a handful of students in the district where English is not their primary language. Um, and we use Dr. Hoffman to both provide consultation to our staff and helping to modify and adapt the curriculum to meet their needs and also provide professional development uh, and best practices of English language learners in the general education classroom. Great, thank you. Okay, um, Dr. Priolo, can you call the roll? Mr. Knuckles. Yes. Ms. Paoli. Yes. Vice President Hogar. Yes. Ms. Benecki. Yes. Mr. Essenplayer. Yes. Yeah. Ms. Hogue. Yes. Ms. Hollingworth. Yes. And President Griffith. Yes. Okay, personnel. Um, approval of personnel transfers, salary upgrades, mentoring, extracurriculars, coaching appointments, leaves of absences, and resignations. Resolution to approve Jessica Fingerman to provide direct ELL support. Resolution to create a stipend position for a teacher on assignment in charge of student life and discipline. Resolution to approve Dana Reganata to provide nursing supervision for a student on field trips and athletic practices. Resolution to approve St Stacy Brown Downham classroom relocation from HMHS to Tatum. Resolution to approve Tina Bozine from Wilmington University to complete her practicum for the Mayor's Service of School Counseling. Resolution to approve the um, bus aids to be paid at an hourly rate. Resolution uh, to approve um, teachers to serve on the 23-24 elementary math selection committee, including piloting the program, after school meetings, presentations, outreaches, and after hours work to support research and recommendation of the elementary math program. Resolution for teachers to serve on the 23-24 English language arts audit committee, including reviewing current curriculum alignment with new DOE standards, after school meetings, presentations, outreach, and after hours work. And that's it. Can I have a motion? So okay. okay. Heather and Linda. Questions, comments? Ms. Paoli. Yes. Vice President Hogerl. Yes. Ms. Benecki. I'm staying on A, otherwise yes. Mr. Essenplayer. Yes. Ms. Hogue. Yes. Ms. Hollingworth. Yes. Mr. Knuckles. Yes. President Crooked. Yes. Approval of business and finance recommendations, the district mold maintenance plan, Millennium Strategies to provide grant research rural services, approval of tuition reimbursements. Um, for Stacy Brown Downham, and approval of tuition reimbursement for Mike Catalano, acceptance of a donation from an anonymous donor, Under Armour molded plastic football cleats for each player. Very nice. Approval of oh, sorry, approval of a settlement agreement, approval of food service agreement uh, between the Board of Ed and Haddonfield Friends School. Approve the agreement with. Republic Bank to participate in Insured Liquidity, liquidity Suite Program, Payment of Bills, Budget Transfers, Board Secretary's Report, and Cash Summary Report. Motion? Okay, okay. Uh, Steph and Bank. Comments, questions? I, I just have to comment. I know you meant that's a fantastic donation, whoever the anonymous yeah. person is. So if they watch this if they hear thank it i mean just it. thank you yeah, thank that. you yeah. mm -hmm. okay vice president hogarl yes Ms. benecki yes mr essenplayer yeah Ms. hogue yes Ms. hollingworth yes mr knuckles yes Ms. paoli yes President Crooked. Yes. 
approval of the minutes, the regular meeting minutes from August the 24th and the executive session from August the 24th. Motion? Mike? Greg? Anyone catch anything? Yeah, I'm um, absent, but then listed as moving for certain things, which just once I appear as having okay so i was not, in fact absent and did not move for anything that's all so we'll have my <laughs> change that thank you are you making a note to tell me that i am thank you so what should we do should we vote on that we'll vote on it um, how about i was the second it? i didn't make the motion oh, right. i don't know if it really matters but we can um, make a, um, what did we do? Make a, um, isn't it, what do you do when you can make a change to it? You can just discuss what the change is right now. Okay. And agree and oh, all right. right. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to make that change. We all agree on the here. Go to the table. I was in here. Much better. And I think I'm just going to be a Robert's rule. Yeah. 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 this somewhere. Okay. Uh, I, I have noted that in minutes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. All right. We can go follow up. Yeah, we'll follow up. Oh, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. You're busy on making your notes in the minutes. Vice President Hoker. Yes, on A, abstain on B. Ms. Pinecki. Oh, staying on vote since I wasn't here. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I could do was say that I wasn't here. <laughs> Mr. S. and Claire. Yes. Ms. Hogue. Yes. Ms. Hollingworth. Yes. Mr. Knuckles. Yes. Ms. Paoli. Yes. President Crooked. Yes. Items for future consideration by the board. Is anyone able to go to the convention? Oh, I'll go on, yes. Okay. So that will be that is October of the twenty first, twenty second. So that will be. It's always a good. I always think of that too. They every year they have a um, a session called Robert Rules, <laughs> which I do not go to. But it's there if you're available. <laughs> and can sit, and, and, can, and interest. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um. All right. Um. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Heather. Second. Okay. And Lynn.